Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform their remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 356. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, or actually 358. I wrote down the wrong number this morning, Mary. Uh, and we're, we're here to share the things of the kingdom, and I'm here with my cohort in life and in the kingdom, Mary Lou. Hello, everybody. Well, we have all kinds of developments every week, don't we? Um, I thought it was so significant about what happened to the Georgia Guidestones. Um, you know, uh, the report is that somebody blew that up. And then it was really odd that they took it down so quickly because it seems like they would have labeled that a crime scene then and not moved anything. They could have put a boundary around it to where it wouldn't have been a danger. Well, there was already a fence around it, and that's that's the, 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 the question that, that you have is why did they take it down? They could have just simply said this is off limits. There's already a chain link fence around uh, it. Uh, uh, we, I wanted to ask everybody to pray for Coach Dave and a pastor that went with him, I guess about 18 months ago, and they marched around that and prayed because, you know, it's a it's a, a it's got to be a place for a portal. Yeah. It's like the Stonehenge and all those things. And I, I heard him talk on a show the other night, and he said that the FBI had visited him once and probably would again. And if, and that that would be a point that they would take, is if anybody had been there, they would have thought, okay, one of these people has done this. Um, I was just, I was in so hopes that, of course, we'd never hear this, guys, if it happened. They'd give another story. But I was so hoped that an angel of God came and tore it down. You know, they got that one. I looked at the uh, camera shot of where it it blew up or whatever, and they've got that light at the center over to the side that comes on. And uh, so, I, I mean, the people that know about explosions and stuff are saying that it, it wasn't like a stick of dynamite did it. It had to be something bigger than that oh it, it had to be much bigger and because i think it was what 53 tons just one of those columns I, was just I outrageous amount of weight well they were made out of granite weren't they, they so were, that's they were made out of solid granite incredibly and, heavy and the questions they can't answer the thing is under 24 hour a day surveillance and i mean it would have taken somebody a while whether they use let's say syntax plastic explosives or, or or some type of ied it would have taken them a while to go up there and and to set it into place and to prepare it and everything. It's it's an odd thing. It's, it's, and it's, another it's, thing I, I that was very odd is they said it was around four o'clock in the morning. Well, I watched the little ticker tape on the time, and that happened at exactly three thirty three. And you know how we always talk about these numbers. Yeah, I just thought that was was very odd. And you know, if if, if this was done by let's say somebody in the occult. The timing, the purpose, and everything would would have been in this, and so well, that why would the, the occult wouldn't have blown up their thing? <laughs> um, they, they, I think one unless of the things, they did it to tra- try to entrap somebody. I, I think one of the things that they're salivating over is hopes that a Christian was involved, so they can begin blaming things on Christians. That's one of the things that I have seen uh, I just, in the news. Media. I think that was so significant. I don't yeah. think they would have ever tried to take that down that's my point because i think it's uh well, it was the american they, they literally called it the american stone hinge well and i i mean it was it was huge and so um it's just it's just very odd the timing of it and everything but i i think we're getting ready to see many things of a supernatural nature I and i see. think i don't think that at most of what's getting ready to happen that there will be any doubt who does it i think it would be humanly impossible to do what we're getting ready to see because i think i think god always exposes wickedness before he judges it and i think he's getting ready to take care of some evil stuff oh, and we need a supernatural move of god in so we many do. different ways we do and so i mean th- this is this is I, I i think exciting i think that um there are so many of the remnant that god has awakened that they're seeking God. I know many of them that are on a regular basis that are fasting and stuff, Mary. This kind of prayer and this kind of pushing into the 
into the presence of God does not go unanswered by heaven. It's it's absolutely no. impossible. There is there is there has been no time in history that this has ever occurred. That, no, that, oh, that, the, this level of evil, my goodness. You know, this level of evil as well as this much of seeking God and heaven not move. Oh, right. But I, I mean, I, we've never seen evil of this magnitude um, because of the abortions. Yes. And I, uh, you know, they're now trying, uh, there's a pro-abortion group is threatening the southern states with a floating abortion clinic in the Gulf of Mexico. You talk about thinking of everything possible to get around this so they can continue to murder babies. I was totally on my face, uh, just couldn't even have spoken as I was listening to a, um, something from Pro-Life Weekly. There's a Dr. Levitino that used to perform abortions, and I, he, they said he performed about 1,200. And uh, his wife couldn't conceive, so they ended up adopting a little girl. And then I guess not too long after that, she became pregnant, and they had a little boy. And um, I think there, those two events, because the, the little girl, in I don't know what age she was, but she ended up being killed in a car accident. And uh, then the birth of the boy, I think, started him thinking and looking at things different. And he said that he, uh, he was getting ready to do an abortion, and he got severely sick. But he said he had to continue because he had already uh, pulled off, I think it was, an arm. And they have to make sure they have all the parts so that they can reconstruct so that there won't be like a severe infection or anything like that. And I just, I looked at that and I thought, God has to hear those babies. Yeah. And you just you just can't imagine. I mean, this is the kind of thing that just blows my mind. And uh, anyway, thank God, he stopped. And now he, he teaches, you know, the truth. And he said that uh, Abby Johnson, I think her name, is the one that used to be at an abortion clinic, and now she talks about what she saw. He said everything she s said, they recounted in that movie, was absolutely correct. And he said he he knows because he's done it. Yeah. And so uh, I just... Guys, this, what, what they have done is they have created a culture of death. Not only is it a culture of death, but why, why are they so... I, I, I think there's two reasons why that they are so hard-pressed to continue abortion, number one, in, in the occult, when you look at, let's say, a, a child sacrifice, one of the things the occult teaches is the more innocent the child, the greater power can be gained. And let me tell you something. There is nothing, there is nothing on this planet more innocent than a child that is still in the mother's womb. No. And little babies even after they're born. And even after they're born. <laughs> and California has recently... Uh, proposed a bill that within so many weeks after the birth, they said you can still abort the baby. That's that's. There's this culture of death. The second thing that we need to realize is not only the abortion, uh, but the selling of the baby's parts and everything oh. is a multi-billion dollar a year industry. See, those are the type of things that make it more horrid now that would used to have not been even. A consideration, you know, years yes. in ancient past. So to me, this is the greatest evil. Um, and so the ones that are fighting it are the most are the ones that have billions of dollars to lose because they have created an industry of death. Well, that's that's what's so sickening. On top of the horrors of what they've done, is is there? It's to make money. Yeah. The love of money, the Bible says, the is the root, root of, of all, all evil. evil. Yes, it is. And you can go, the, in, in fact, uh, I think a lot of the wars that have happened in the last uh, 100 years or so, many of these conflicts and stuff is to feed the military-industrial complex. It's to it's men with greed and dictatorships and all these things. It's the, it's the absolute love of money. And uh, I, I think that what blows me away when you look at uh, some billionaires that are just world. They're just set on on creating the new world order. It's 
they're billionaires, but they can't get enough money. They're, 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 and, and it just generates all this evil. And the, you know, the Bible says that God can add wealth and he adds no sorrow with it, but when the enemy adds wealth, it's for the creation of sorrow, not only in the lives of those that have it, but they create sorrow around the world in their greed to get more. It's so sad. I mean, the you know, you, you get past the, the anger of it, and you just go into such a mourning. Yeah. And you just think, how did we, how did we get here? And, and I'll tell you how we got here. It was all the junk that was done to sit and got out of here, to take him out of the schools. and, and You know, <sighs> the, the, the word says in the book of Revelation that we overcome the wicked one by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and loving our, not our lives to death. When you look at the Greek word that's translated uh, the word of our testimony, uh, it can be translated two ways. It can it can be translated prophetic to to prophetically speak God's judgment or, or God's word. The other Mary, that same word means to stand in a court of law and to give testimony. What these people don't realize is one day, when they stand before the judgment seat of God, every child that they aborted is going to stand as a witness before the judge of the universe and give testimony yeah. before the judge. Of Unless what was they've done. repented. Unless they've repented and, and have come and brought that under the blood of Jesus. Well, it was just, it was, I've heard things like this before, but hearing that doctor say that, man, that just threw me for a loop. Yeah. And, it, you know, there's a difference, though, that when, you know, the law, look at what the law of the land did and permitted this. So when the Supreme Court put this back to the states, and the states can say no abortions here. It's huge because it's, it's huge. it affects the spirit realm. It cuts off the the power source. And um, I I think that God has everything orchestrated to where there's this that has happened. Then we'll see other things that are happening, and and it will be um, there will be a crescendo at some point, and and part of that's going to be, I think as God waits on his people to get prepared. And that's, that's where we are right now. <clears throat> well, you know, Mary, I, I think one of the things God's been, as, as in the mornings when I walk and everything, and I've been, we've been praying for rain. And every time I begin approaching God for rain, one of the things he tells me is he says, plead the case for your state. Plead yeah, that's the case for doing. your state. And I, I think we're in a time that uh, I think God has orchestrated this to, in, in a sense, separate the the goat states from the sheep states. Because I, I think there's going to come a time where we're talking about spot judgment, that we're going to see the judgment of God fall and fall hard on the states that insist on maintaining abortion and, and, and trying to establish unrighteous laws. But and this, at the same time, he can protect his people there. Yeah, he can protect you know, his there people. There can be Goshen's, and, and I, I think I think that God's going to call a lot of those people to move out of those states because they're going they're going the righteous are going to say, you know what, I cannot be associated with what my state stands for anymore. And I think there's going to be I think there's going to be some migrations and different things. Well, going. I think there are, but I think if if God tells them to stay, yeah. I think that He's got protection for them. But I, I think that the states that are that are standing up for the right things, I think God is going to bless, and I think there's going to be this this marked contrast. Well, I've I've been hoping that um, you know we're going to get enough rain here that we can then our crops can help other places. Um, I'm I'm constantly praying for the West Coast. We've got so many partners out there we love, and um, you know there's there's been revival starting out there, and that to me that's the key. If you can get the presence of God someplace and ask forgiveness for the sins of a state, it can start turning it the other way. Well, I yeah. just th- I just think where we're going to see a lot of judgment is falling on legislators, on judges that are making these evil decisions. Yeah, and you know, I, I, and I know God's not done with those states. We, we were watching uh, uh, some of the uh, camp meeting for Mod Parsley, and they they had the one guy there that was had pastored for a long time in South Carolina. I, I forget his name. He's the one that had the black and white jacket on that his wife had bought him. But he had been in South Carolina, and he said, "Listen, to South Carolina, there's a church on every corner." He had spent years building that church up. I think they had like eleven thousand members. 
God calls him to Northern California. And he said, it's, he said, it's not a different, he said, it's like being on a different planet. He said, while we're clapping and applauding that Roe versus Wade is turned over, he said, he said, where I'm at, he said, you, he said, I can't find another church for a hundred miles. And he said, the people are in mourning Mm -hmm. over it. And so God sends him as a missionary there leaving a work that he had spent over 25 years establishing to go there to do something. You know what that tells me? God's not done yet. God's not done yet that there, that there is a turnaround. And basically that man is like an, a missionary sent into a pagan land to bring hearts to Jesus. Now, what gives me hope, and although I think there's going to be judgment, I think the judgment is going to be toward getting the people to return back to God. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't be sending missionaries. He he would tell all his people, I want you all to be out of here by December. But he's not doing that. He's actually sending people in to begin ministering and to preach the word where they're in in that area, I guess, in California. If you can go 100 miles, I I can't imagine. Like we're here in Missouri. Can you imagine going 100 miles and not finding a church? Unless no, it is we're the, in the Bible Belt. <laughs> unless it unless it's just farmland, as far as you can see. Well, a lot no of town. that is, I think. But uh, but in the in a lot of that in California, I mean, it, it's a, it's a metropolitan area, but there's no churches at all. And so, guys, God is working. God has a plan. God, God, there, there's going to be spot judgment, but it's spot judgment unto repentance, not complete destruction. Yeah, I think I think we're passing what I felt like, at least for me. This may not be, you know, nationwide or anything, but I felt like I was passing from just this intense mourning over what's happened um, to righteous anger, and and we've got to go forward. Um, God had me in Ephesians, and um, I want to I want to start with Ephesians three. Um, it says, Ephesians 3, verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now most people, if you hear that quoted, they'll say, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. But it isn't like an adverb describing an adverb. It's exceeding you're going beyond abundantly. Mm-hmm. So, so think about that. You've, you've got abundantly above all that we would ask or think, but it exceeds that. Oh, absolutely. Because there, we can't even think of the things that God can do. I, I marvel at the orchestration that it took God to get Roe versus Wade overturned. You know, he heard the cry of the people so heartbroken. Yes. And he answered. But now he's he's calling us to say, okay, it's time to, to make a stand. And that's what it says in Ephesians. We'll go through that here in a second. But it says, make a stand. And then, you know, when we were talking about taking the land like Joshua, that's you go beyond standing then. Yes. You you go to that place uh, that, that you... You t- start telling the kingdom of darkness that they're going to let go. Yes, and that's stepping over the line. And that's you know you have to um, you have to be prepared because there's always backlashes, and you got to make sure that you're not you don't have sin in your life that the doors are covered if there's something you don't know, uh, so that you can make decrees and go forward. But um, we're going to have to. To see, like like God would say it uh, to me, like taking it up another notch. Yeah, <laughs> remember they that Emerald Lagasse when he he did Bam, that. Bam, take it up another yeah. notch. And it's um, because what God wants us to walk in is victory. Oh, absolutely, victory over the enemy, taking back the ground. Uh, he wants us to have victory over bondage in our life, and so so I can I can sense. The power of God is building, and and I think that's what um, my prayers are supposed to be focused on before the conference, is preparing 
to go with the level of anointing that is needed to bust through. Oh, because absolutely. because we're all, like I said, we're we've got a momentum going. But but there it's it's like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man on that Ghostbusters, that old Ghostbusters movie. It's they're puffing up. They're trying they're trying to to do everything that they can. But you know, it's like a balloon. God can pop it in a second. But he wants he wants us because it says that um that we're ambassadors. Let me go back to yeah, it's verse twenty. Um, well, says, that's a I'm, different. Yeah. In uh, Ephesians six, first. Uh, well, let me go to nineteen and said, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. First of all, we've got to speak what God's wanting us to speak, but an ambassador means that you're going in. In the name of the king. Yes. And so we're we're going with a stamp of approval of the king, declaring what's what's should happen. And so um, I'd ask, you know, what I, I think a large part of what was propelling the what God orchestrated with, you know, the the abortion decision was God's people saying, "We forbid it." Yes, we forbid abortion to continue. We forbid it in our city. We forbid it in our our state, our nation, and because God will take the utterance of what is His will, and then then He works, because this is the way He outlined it. He well, outlined it for us. I think that's the. In fact, when you look at Ecclesia in in the original Greek, which is also translated the church, it was uh, within within the Greek that means a a body of people like within a city or whatever that would get together and they say these are our laws. And and there is a supernatural anointing within the ecclesia to say, you know, Jesus said, listen, that which you permit, now there's several places he uses binding and loosing. One of them is what we're talking about. It's not binding and loosing spiritual forces. We see that at Mount Hermon. But he was saying, listen, whatever you permit in your community, you as a body, whatever you permit in your community, heaven's going to have to let happen. Whatever you bind, heaven's going to enforce. And so it, it's there, there, there has been a lot that has been delegated to the body of Christ that we have not been using because we have never been taught that that's our authority to do. We've not only not been using, we have been putting our stamp of approval on sin. On, on the wrong things. Now, when you look at the Ephesians chapter 6, and, and some people misuse Ephesians 6 because the armor is not about fighting the devil to get uh, material possessions. When you, when you set this whole thing back into historical context, Ephesians was written, you know, the Apostle Paul went three years and administered and taught daily three years in, in Ephesus, and this was probably about five or six years after that that he wrote the book of Ephesians. When you go back and you read the book of Acts, Mary, and it was the very beginning, it was like within probably 30 to 60 days of him arriving in Ephesus, they have a riot in which if that if that city clerk had not intervened, the men of Ephesus were going to rise up and kill every single Christian that was in that city. Because he went into an area. When you when you study Ephesus, at this time, Mary, Ephesus was over two thousand years old. That's an old city. And within its legends, it was founded by Amazon women who were a worshippers of Gaia. And they believed that Ephesus was right near the place that the old ancient Greek god, Mother Earth, if you will, was birthed right near where Ephesus was. So this was the epicenter on planet Earth for female deity worship. That's what they were famous for. That, that's why that city existed. It, it was the cultural place in the ancient world to come to study how to worship female deity. And it, it was Artemis. Uh, uh, by the it was Artemis in, in in the Greek, but when you go by the time you go to Latin, by the time Paul got there, it, it, it was Diana, same goddess. Okay, that's the principality and power over that area. There, there was such a stronghold. This this was the notoriety of the city. This was the cash cow of this city, because this is where people came to study as well as to get uh, all the paraphernalia that you would use for female goddess worship. In fact, what's interesting is the guy that started the whole riot made silver idols of Diana. It's about money, the same thing with abortion, yeah. about money. 
And so when they went in there, this principality stirred up this riot because it controlled the culture, it controlled the education, yeah. it controlled the politics, it controlled everything, just like the principalities in America. Yeah, that's true. Okay? And so in the book of Ephesians, Paul, Ephesians 2, we so misinterpret this. He said, listen, when you're set up above principalities and powers in Christ, that's not that we're up there ordering angels and all that. He said, listen, who you have become in Christ, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You're now answerable to Jesus, and you're outside the jurisdiction of the principalities and powers that rule the nations and that rule that city. You're no longer subject to their their mental pressure, the political pressure, the emotional pressure, whatever they're using to gravitate uh, that society toward where they get the greatest bang for their buck because one of the things I, I postulate in the Sharif imperative is that the kingdom of darkness functions. They're empowered by our sin. So the greater sin that they can create, the stronger those principalities and powers become. Okay? And Paul began affecting that by preaching the gospel. Every time you lose, every time somebody is saved, they lose a Duracell battery. Mm -hmm. they, lose a, they lose a power That's generator. That's what it's equated to. Okay. And so we got to stop the gospel. We got to stop Paul from preaching. So they created a riot. And so then Paul says, well, you know, this is a, this is a, a center for education. So he would actually go in their university, which had diversity, and he, and he would teach daily uh, in their university. So he had to restructure his, um, his modus operandi or his, his missiology for reaching that city. And then he's, so this, so the book of Ephesians was written, uh, five to ten years after he finished his missionary journey there. He was there three years. And he said, listen, guys, you have been given the armor of God for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through pulling down strongholds and stuff. He says that in Second Corinthians. But he said, listen, our fight's not with flesh and blood. You know what we're supposed to do with flesh and blood? We're supposed to share the gospel with them to get them out of the authority of the principalities and powers. Yeah, that's okay? true. But we have been given this armor so that we can withstand how that, that principality and power is manipulating the culture, manipulating the politics, manipulating the educational system, and every other thing to bring greater sin into that city. That's the purpose of the armor. And he used uh, as an illustration the Roman soldier, which at that time was the most powerful fighting force on the planet. Nobody could withstand the Roman army. And he equated that to the believer, that in me in Christ and you in Christ, together, no principality or power can withstand it when we decide that we're going to take a stand on something and when we know that we've done everything that we know to do, that we stand there for yeah. And when you look at the Roman uh, soldier army, several things. They, they weren't wearing tennis shoes. When they, 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 their combat boots had, depending upon the type of battle they were doing, they could have anywhere between an inch and a half to four-inch spikes on the bottom of their shoes so that when they stood their ground, you want to talk about digging in, they dug in. You were not going to move that soldier. And there were also spikes on the bottom of his shield, that he could sink that into the ground, his shield. But on the, on, the, on, the, on the four corners of the shield, there were loops and hooks. And th this, is, this is something, when you study the fighting technique of the Romans, this is one of the things that in history they were famous for, that they would build a wall. They would sink in, they would connect those together, and they would build a wall, and that wall was unmovable until they would move forward. That step by yeah. step, they would take a step, they would sink down in and bury that thing back in yeah. again and hold their ground. And then they would take a step and they would hold their ground. And that wall began to move until they overcome the enemy in that area. Mary, that's the remnant. That's it. And, and that's why the remnant, God's going to bring them together. Because you got all these divisions and fighting and things like that, but... God's going to bring a people together that'll stand together and and we'll move in the same step and we'll we'll be united yeah. in the fight. Yes. And you know, one can send a thousand to flight, two can send 10,000. There's there's this 
exponential increase yes as you join together and i that's what god's doing he, he's yes. getting us ready he had to show us everything first because we got so blinded you know the minute that they they did these big moves saying abortion was okay you know uh the sexual revolution of the 60s the drugs and and those you know those drugs i was thinking about this this week because of something i was i was uh, reading and you know when when they went on those psychedelic drugs mike they would enter the astral plane essentially that's yes. what they were doing is is that's it, that mind expansion right and and so they would go on the astral plane and um what I've been looking at, and it, and I think this is is proven out through what counselors have said and and the things I've witnessed, is once you go on that astral plane, it's like there's there's an imprint there, and that is where you're really in trouble. That's why I tell everybody, you know, I've seen people that are counselors to uh, people. They say they go on the astral plane and fight on that astral plane, fight in their dreams and things like that. God gave us the position of fighting from right here. Yes. And yes, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That authority that is there is ours here to, to wield. He gave us authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. But it's from, it's from a ground. <laughs> it's, yes. it, you, we don't go on the astral plane. It's forbidden. So these people that took these psychedelic drugs, LSD and all these things, and I think that there were massive amounts of them. I mean, if my, if my high school was anything compared, you know, like I can't even imagine because there were so many people that took drugs in that small high school I was at. I can't even imagine. But once you have one of these out-of-body experiences, then there's an opening there's an opening there. Yeah, you created a portal. And unless you know to close that, that stays open. I believe that's part of what they've used, even in mind control, because um, you know when when you're born from someone that has had mind control programming, um, I think I think those uh, neural pathway constructs can be passed down genetically, just like the monarch butterfly. Uh, when they have their offspring, they will go right back to the place in Mexico that the only way that they would know to go there would it was genetically transferred, and they use that that thing to uh, to delve into the research and to find out what could be done. And so, so if you are the child of somebody that was in that took those those drugs, you could have that pattern already established in you as a yeah. genetic passing on. <laughs> yeah, that, that, well, that was discovery within MK Ultra that they did that even created the Monarch Project. That if somebody whose mind has been split either from from drugs or from even the trauma and stuff that they did with that, that their children were predispositioned to where it it was it was almost natural to them. Right, because all of that there's things that get transferred. Well, and then you have the generational spirits that would be in a vacuum. You've always said there's no spiritual vacuum. No, there's not. So if there's if there's a and this is the way I think that they do it. Now, this is my opinion, because I think this is this would make sense on how they could use this. Um, I think that they, if this, if a a child is born with this, and there's a vacuum there, I think, and they they had a legal right to pull a part of the soul on the astral plane, then there would be the vacuum there for a spirit to enter. Well, absolutely. And I think as a child, they wouldn't make this a, a scary experience. You know, there's a lot of kids say that they, they have dreams and they're flying and things like that. They wouldn't make it scary to them. They would want the vacuum created so that the spirit could come in and influence. And so the child would probably be like they're on an adventure or something. That in their mind, they're thinking, okay, I'm, so there'd be no resistance. You could, you could grow up with this. This is going on in the background. You don't even know what's going on, but your life would be a disaster. Yeah. It would be an absolute disaster. You wouldn't have a clue what was going on. You wouldn't have a clue. Just your life would be falling apart. And that's all there is to it. And I think that because that's going on, there would be a sense of emptiness within the individual that there's there's like... Oh, yeah. You, you would have the sense, just like I sense my whole life. something was missing. Something's wrong. Something's yeah. bad wrong. I just don't have a clue what it is. And so now that could be closed down easily with prayer. Oh, yeah. But the thing of it is, is you got to know it's is, there. Well, and we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, and that's what Satan does. He works in darkness. Things that we would never even think about. You would think that that you're like if a person took LSD, you would never consider 
that that could affect your kids other than maybe a, a I don't know, something physical that, yeah. that would be a result of that. But, but as far as like a neural pathway that, that is it's kind of dedicated to the kingdom of darkness because of what was done. And so if you, if you knew to pay, uh, ask forgiveness for sins of ancestors, I think that could close that down. But, uh, but most people teach you that there's no such thing as a generational curse. Most people say if you're saved, that's it. Everything's cut off. They don't even teach about open doors. So how, how do they explain how there are so many Christians in such devastating conditions? Well, they, they revert back to the same way they just don't have enough faith. And that's not true. It's, it's that we, if the Apostle Paul said, I would not have you be ignorant of the enemy's devices. And back then, within their culture, the, the Gentiles that he was speaking to knew about astral projection. They knew about worshiping of the gods. They knew what was pagan. They knew all these things already. He was just teaching them how to overcome. You know, I, I remember the testimony of Josh Peck before, uh, uh, and, and, and his, you know, if you ever listened to him, he, he got... He actually tried to get preachers as a teenager to deal with Genesis 6 and stuff, and they didn't. And, and so he, he kind of dismissed the word, and he actually got into some of this stuff. New age, yeah. New age, and when he astro-projected, the things that were up there took notice of him. And when he got back in his body, they followed him, and all hell began to break loose. And he, had, he wrote, he actually ended up emailing L.A. Marzulli and says, you know, dude, how do I shut this down? And L.A. You know, gave him the prayers and stuff. And, and uh, you know, we know we have discovered that if, if, that if you've had this stuff going on, you know, one of the first prayers to pray is I command everything that's of me to enter back into my body into, into, because there is spiritual territory within your soul. That, that's why we, uh, that thoughts can have demonic power. That's one of the things the Ephesians chapter 2 teaches us, that it's, it's like plugging in and you're, you're giving them an Ethernet connection, the enemy. And so you know, part of the sanctification process, Lord, I command everything that's of me to enter back into me. I command everything not of me or not of your kingdom, get out in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over the places that you entered. I repent it in the name of Jesus of anything that gave you access to me by myself or by my ancestors. I shut it down right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would seal me. Seal me and close these doors by the blood of Jesus and by the completed work of Christ. And then the Holy Spirit goes to work in showing you, okay, now these things entered into your life a long time ago, whether it's sin or, or astral projection or whatever, and they were your tutors. They taught you a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. They taught you maybe that you weren't worthy or that you may, ha may have to manipulate to protect yourself. I mean, there's, there's, there's a wide range of things. That's why in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul teaches us, you have been given authority to take every thought captive and examine that thought. Is it of God? Is it of the old self that was trained by these principalities and powers or are these are the or demons or whatever? And if it is, you have the authority to call it a lie and to pull it down and to bring it into subjection to Christ. You have that. You know, I, I can't go in your head and do that for you. You have been given authority to do it, and you have the right to question. You know, one of the things the devil loves to do, let's say if, if you were abused as a child, what the devil loves to do and say, it's your fault. It's all your fault. You know what, as a believer, you have a right to do? I think that's a lie. It wasn't my fault. It was somebody had a devil, and they took advantage of a child. It was not my fault. I call that a lie, and spirit, I judge you in the name of Jesus, and I command, and I judge everything that you have ever taught me, and my need to manipulate, and a lot of times that spirit will be the, the, the gateway to open up, let's say, to a Jezebel spirit or something else, and I bind you up, and I bind every demon that's come up with you, and I bind up your ideas, and I reject them, and I command you, get out of my life, get out of my mind, and then start getting into the Word of God to renew your mind to that, and begin shutting down the portals, begin shutting down the access points this is a part of the standard sanctification process that the church has lost mary they have and what makes it really bad is these things that have to do with the astral plane and and you know trauma maybe even in the womb that can cause things that, that nobody's ever even hardly looked at you know everybody just think well the holy spirit won't allow that it's it's already set in motion what is permitted and what is not. God's already said, don't do these things. 
So if you have ancestors that have done and opened up doors, yes, opened up, taken parts parts of your soul to the astral plane, whatever they've done, new age, witchcraft, whatever, the results are catastrophic. They are. That's, that's the whole reason God said not to do it. The answer is Jesus. Yes. He already gave us the victory. But how are you supposed to pray over something you have no conception could even be done? You can't conceive of it. You can't, um, you know, it, it's a stark reality when you see some of these things. It really is. And, you know, the old time deliverance where years ago where you'd see these older uh, generals in the faith that just cast devils out and things like that. I am telling you, this is something else. <laughs> it is. It's something else to see. You know, we, we have so lost the purpose of Ephesians chapter 6 that th- there's, there's, three t- there's three things that are either happening. Number one, we think that that armor is so that we can increase our wealth in Laodicea. Okay. Two, we're sharpening the sword so that we can use them on each other and we're beating each other to death with the shield of faith. But the third option is return back to the Word of God. It it is for spiritual warfare to overcome the principalities and powers and their influence on culture. Mm -hmm. And that's where the church has completely failed in America. Yeah, we have. We have allowed these principalities and powers to take what God had established as a Judeo-Christian ethic that was established because of the Protestant movement. And notice I said Judeo-Christian It was Moses and Jesus, okay, from the Torah and the teachings of Jesus established the ethics within our culture, which really was hard on the principalities and powers that the Masons were setting up over America, the Baals. And so they had to convince the church, follow after these sparkly things, follow, follow follow after the love of money, follow after this. Oh, God just wants to make you rich, and he wants to puff up your flesh, and he wants to do this. Or consider the word of God. I just read now where ministers, Mary, not, not people in the pew, but ministers, the majority of ministers believe that the word of God is nothing more than myth and fable. Mm-hmm. Please. It is the infallible, inerrant, revelation from almighty god in fact the torah jesus is the torah made flesh when you understand the the whole concept of it the word of god existed before the foundation of the world it was spoken by god it's infallible and one of the the things that that uh, archaeology constantly does the left constantly tries to hide is over and over again it validates the Bible. This really did happen. This really did happen. This really did happen. Guys, they know where Sodom and Gomorrah is, and it has been reduced to ash at a submolecular level, that there are mountains and there are ziggurats that have been reduced to ash. They still maintain their site, but you can walk up to that thing and you can put your arm into it because it's all the way down to the very center. It has been reduced to ash, and it's still there today as a reminder of not only the, the the homosexuality that was in Sodom and Gomorrah, but they absolutely corrupted justice. Mm-hmm. That one of the things the rabbis share about Sodom and Gomorrah is let's say if you were a stranger and you come wandering in and you were starving to death, they would give you money and then the merchants wouldn't sell you food and life as you starved to death. That That's how evil Sodom and Gomorrah was. They so corrupted justice. Kind of like things that are going on yeah. in the world today. And Sodom and Gomorrah to this day is a reminder to planet Earth. There comes a time that God says, I have had yeah. enough. Well, I think we're fastly approaching that over America and what's been done. I do too. And I think God's going to show mercy. I think he is showing mercy. Um, and I'm thankful for that. But I think that he's expecting us to take a stand. And the good news, the encouraging thing for me about the um, the conference center is I think that God will reveal anything hidden. If there's somebody there with a bondage, I think God will reveal the source. Oh, I do too. And that's that's the wonderful thing. And all of the uh, complexities of the things that we've even talked about, about mind control and things like that, nothing's hidden from God. And if you can hear from God what the you know the laser prayer is that's needed to just totally tear it apart, oh, you absolutely. got it. It's just Satan has done things that are so beyond our comprehension that could be done nobody's known what to pray. And I think there have been many people that have died in bondage 
because there, there was something. They just they didn't know what to pray. They just gave up. They couldn't get free. But I can tell you there is an anointing coming that will have a prophetic joining, mm-hmm. a prophetic anointing that will reveal the hidden and bunker-busting power. When you, when you have believers coming together, say, we're here to seek the face of God. Let everything hidden be revealed. And Father, we're, ex- we're expecting you to move, to change lives, to set people free. When you have that expectation, heaven always shows up. Mm-hmm. But what have what? look at what, what these principalities and powers have done with the church. There's a difference between goosebumps, and sometimes they call them Holy Ghost goosebumps. And I thought there's, there's real, there's times where I've, I've actually had just the presence of God come in that, I mean, you, you have goosebumps and stuff, but we have, we have changed that to entertainment. The church needs to get out of entertainment mode and get back into becoming a real community of faith to where we're, if, if you have believers standing with their shields together and saying, we're standing on yeah, truth. We're not budging. <laughs> and we're not budging. We're moving forward. We're taking yeah, ground. That's right. You see, that? that's where God's wanting us right now is to, to get our act together, to shut down, because can you imagine, okay, you, you have this whole line of these soldiers, and they have linked their shields together. Mary, what happens if you have two or three soldiers that have not been properly disciplined in their military training, and they break rakes and run? Do you know what you have? You have, you have holes in that wall, and the enemy can come in. Right. That's what we're dealing with a lot is breaches. <laughs> and so when we, when we stand uniform to where there are no breaches and we're all believing God, that's when one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight, three can put 100,000 to flight. You have exponential annotation. It just, it just keeps on growing. That's what, that, and that's what God is preparing the remnant for. Yeah. That we have got to take back our culture. We have we have got to, and I think the first thing we need to do is we got to take back our churches. Yeah, yeah, and it it just it comes down to this: is when when you're t- together in one accord, you can make a declaration, stand in there with your shields, with the whole armor on. God's our rear guard, so when it's the remnant, you don't have to worry about somebody stabbing you in the back. You're all together. And you can move forward, and that's when you can make those declarations. We're to boldly declare as the ambassadors of God. Yes. You're not having my family. You're not going to continue to destroy marriages. You're not going to continue to destroy the the schools and put these horrible things in schools. You're not going to do anything because we've got authority over yeah. you. We're standing together. I, I think that's a part of that we have got to do is to understand and accept our ambassadorial assignment. All of us yeah. are ambassadors That's of it. Christ. That's it. Which means we are a representative of the king. Mm-hmm. Now, when you when you take that up, that makes you an activist in the kingdom. Yep. You know, we always talk about, you know, the activists of the left, they're always looking to make a place for their voice to be heard. We need to start looking for places to make our voice heard because when our voice is God's voice, it changes things. Things. The media has been used as a counterfeit to that. Yes. And the good news is, as I uh, was listening to a program yesterday, and they there was a, a recent poll. They said that only uh, 16% of the population trusted written newspapers. Only 11% trust the news people. You know, the, yeah, the TV shows. they've lied too many times. They, they've caught them in too many lies. And so that's, that's huge there because those are the prophets of Baal. They are presenting... What everybody's supposed to just accept it, accept it. This is fact. Accept this. Accept that this is right now instead of wrong. And so that's decreasing. Time for the remnant to stand and say, okay, we're coming. We're, we're going to over, override the voices of the enemy with the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. Yeah. You know, God has been really dealing with, with this activist stuff, and, and usually when I, on my cell phone when I see a, a call that I don't, the number that I don't recognize, I don't answer it. And there's been a, there's been twice now God has told me answer the phone, and every time it's been somebody taking a survey, okay, and you know act, uh, leftists will line up and stand for hours in a line to take a survey because it's making their voice heard so that when you can when you see on the news you know the survey was taken that seventy five percent of all Americans want abortion no it didn't seventy five percent of the people that were all activists that lined up in line that you interviewed yeah okay? that's true. <laughs> 
and God, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking, God, you told me the answer to phone, and it's a stinking survey. And God says, listen to what they're saying. And, you know, the first one, I, I went ahead and I answered because, okay, I want God's way. And the second one, I told him, I said, you're answering all the wrong, you're asking the wrong questions. Because the questions you're asking is because you have already predetermined what you want. And did you know that surveyor hung up on me? It, it, it's to show you the extent mm -hmm. of what they're trying to put on the news. But you know what this is doing? This only 15% of the people trust. That means 85% of the people are looking for a voice that will tell them truth. <laughs> That's us. That if we will start speaking yeah. truth and, they be, and, they, and they're looking for truth and they're, they're saying this other stuff, these people are liars, speak God's truth. Mm -hmm. in the middle of that and you're you're like a you, you say well you know as far as being you know, on fire for the kingdom of god i i feel like if if i was lit i'd be nothing but a little match it is so dark that even if you were just a little match they could see you for miles yeah you see we're without excuse yeah god told me in the last days there would be whole cities that you could see from a, a far off because the light of his presence will be there. Yeah. And so he's getting ready to show up, but we need to be ready. Yeah. We need to do our part. We need to be those ambassadors and, and say to Jezebel and her prophets of Baal, shut up yeah. in Jesus' name. Now, when you accept the position as an ambassador, several things also come into place. You see, ambassadors, when they go, the kingdom that they represent Provides for all their needs. That's right. Second, no ambassador goes out without an ambassadorial guard. You see, that's where you say, well, you know, I knew a bunch of Christians, and, and, and uh, God didn't really provide or protect them. They weren't acting as ambassadors. You have to accept mm -hmm. the position and then begin walking as an ambassador. Uh, one, of the, one of the guys that just always amazed me was Lester Summerall. He walked as an ambassador. He really did. And I mean, he got the attention of kings. He got the attention of presidents. And when he walked into a place, because he took that position, and all he, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm here for the king. I don't want to talk about anything but the king. I want to talk about the king's word. I want to talk about the king. And that, yeah. that's all he was about, because he was an ambassador. When he came into a place, he changed the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. that's where God is wanting to take all of us. And, and I'm, I'm speaking to, to myself just as much as I'm speaking to yeah, you. Yeah, I am to me too. That we <laughs> actively have to take that ambassadorial role. And once we do, we bring the kingdom with us. Because lawlessness right now in America is absolutely out of control, and I think it's time for us to begin raising up and binding up the spirit of lawlessness. There were, there were several things in the, in the last couple of weeks that married that really – uh, took me by by surprise. One of them was up in Chicago, that a, a a person got an order wrong at McDonald's, and this woman came over the counter and and beat this person to the place they had to be hospitalized. The one this last week that happened down in Atlanta, Georgia, which you know you go down to Atlanta, there is a church on every corner. I, I remember Jimmy Smith years ago told me that if you can't build a church of four hundred members uh, in Atlanta, and uh, that you are not only not only not even remotely called to ministry, but you're a complete failure in every other place because it was it's this people go to church there. In Atlanta, there was a person shot and killed in a subway restaurant because they put too much mayonnaise on a sandwich. And you're thinking, what kind of lawlessness is going on right now? And I, I think it is because the church has not taken this position. We're the salt. We're the light in the earth. And God is saying, listen, remnant, become that soldier that will not break ranks. Become that soldier that the Holy Spirit is the captain of the host. And if all of us are obedient to him, we'll be those soldiers lined up. We'll be those soldiers that are experts at wielding the sword against the enemy. We are the soldiers that will dig our feet in and say that we will not move. We are those soldiers that when the Holy Spirit says, hold your ground, we as a body That's hold it. the ground. When he says, take one step forward, we take that one step forward, hold the ground. Take another step forward, hold the ground. We, Mary, we have miles that we've got to make up. Yeah, if that, I had a hanky, I'd be waving it right now because that's good preaching. That, <laughs> that's exactly that what That over the last decades, 
And in fact, when you look at Roe versus Wade, when you look at the um, the Supreme Court justices, I don't care if they were conservative, or liberal, whatever, they were all Masons. Okay, that that's just simply a historical fact. It, it was a setup that there, there was an industry waiting to be birthed because that principality and power said, what I want to do in establishing Babylon and the earth, I need a place that I can push worldwide and reestablish the altars of Moloch. You know what? It's time to knock that altar over. It's time to knock over the altars of Moloch in the spirit realm. I'm not talking about taking up physical violence. I'm talking about us taking our authority, both culturally and spiritually, being a voice of righteousness, of holiness, and reason, and speaking life back into the planet, speaking life back into our culture, and begin winning souls to Jesus and teaching them the things that used to control your life. Jesus is ready to set you free of. That's what's coming. There, there's going to be an explosion of the power of God to set people free. Because what, what Satan thought that he has all sewed up, so much stuff in people's lives they can't even understand it all. They don't have a clue where it's all coming from. You know, we, we know a lot of things. If you sin, this happens. If, but, but things that are, are not common knowledge, he's used to the max. And like you said, I don't, I don't think all the... Supreme Court justices were Freemasons, uh, but a large portion of them were. The great majority. I, th- I think only one, one or two of them weren't. At the I, time. I don't know. I looked it up one time, and there, there were some that couldn't be found as Masons. Yep. But everyone that was a Mason had a direct conduit to the kingdom of darkness, feeding them information. Yeah. Yeah, there was they would agenda. have thought it's their thoughts, you know, but there, there, was, there was an, was agenda. an agenda there. There was an agenda. And that's, to me, the, how they built America was through Freemasonry. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they built it, from the actual cornerstones, the buildings, the uh, monuments, to the the spiritual construct uh, over this nation by the connection of the minds by some of that stuff I just talked to. That yeah, you know, minds could. It's like when they do these the these mind. sci-fi things, like the Borg and the hive mind and stuff. They're doing that because they're they're mocking us. They've already got it done. Well, the Tower of Babel was a hive mind, mm-hmm. okay? That if they had one thought, one purpose, there was nothing impossible to them. And so what, what do they do? They have one mind, they have one purpose, and they sow discord in the body so that we're fighting each other so that we're not of one accord. You see, when we lay down our carnality, when we lay down our own agendas, when we laid all this stuff down and say, okay, I'm an ambassador for Christ, Therefore, I do what he wants. I speak what he wants. Uh, that I'm I'm not here to to say this is what Mike Lake feels like needs to be done. Specific. This is what the king has declared. I'm here to give what the king has declared. Man, that that when when we start doing that as a body, it sends chills down the enemy's spine. Yeah, it does. He's scared to death of that. Well, he's scared right now because the agenda is falling apart. Yeah. You know, how, how many years ago now was all the food supposed to be gone? Yeah. You know, their agenda said this, but God's mercy, yeah. but God's mercy. Now they're going into overdrive trying to make up for lost ground, but you know what? We can pray and God can change it. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. And he's, he wants us to change it. Yes. He wants to see his people rise up, take that am, ambassadorial position, speak what the king wants said, and heaven will back it up. And so when we say, you're not going to have this nation, you're not going to have my state, you're going to move out of here. You're not going to have my city. That's right. You're not going to have my family. Yes. You're going to let go of my kids. Yes. See, he doesn't have a choice. There will be a point that he will eventually, he has to let go. Come on. Now, I need the hanky right now. That's a good preaching, girl. Guys, this is a time for us to be encouraged. This is a time for us to get out of victim mode, to get out of old poor pitiful me mode. Because if you're saved, the old pitiful me died with Jesus on the cross. And I have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I was created to walk in authority. I was created to walk in kingdom power. I was created to walk in kingdom victory. I was created so that when I prayed, heaven would move and hell would fail. Not just the chosen few, 
but everyone that is in Christ. That's it. And that God has called me to be an ambassador. And it's time that we start functioning as that in the earth and to be his soldiers, to bring forth the power of the kingdom of God. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament is found at the very end of the book of Mark, where it says when they went out and they were preaching the gospel, that God worked with them. Mm, I love that. With signs and wonders. That's right. You see, God, we want God to work as long as we can sit here and eat popcorn and want, and, and let him do it. But he says, no, 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 this is God and sons. This is God and kids. This is God and daughters. That I, God has chosen to work with us and through us to accomplish his will in the earth. And the reward to come after this life is to the extent that we worked with him and not against him, Mary. Like Ephesians 3.20 said, <coughs> Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. Now I think of, just think of abundance. Okay, God is abundantly working. Blows your mind. Blow your mind abundance. Okay. Yeah. Overflowing, can't even imagine. Can't even all. imagine that. It's like, it's like I heard Trump say, "You guys are going to get tired of winning." That's the way it's supposed to be in the kingdom of God. It's like we were winning so much, and then the apostle Paul says, "No, wait a minute. Now that's abundantly, but what we're headed for is exceedingly abundantly." Go ahead and take that abundance and times it by a million. It exceeds abundantly. It exceeds abundantly. That's you a see, whole bunch. You see, and, and I, I want to change some people's paradigm. Marion and I are not here to make you feel good. We're not here to give you a warm fuzzy. We're here to make you victorious in Christ. We're here to prepare an army for God. We're here to make you ambassadors. We're here to knock off the junk off of you so that you can be equipped. You know, one of the things that I have, that there, there is not only is there not a, a spiritual vacuum, there's so much stuff that God wants to give you but, you know, it's like having your arms full of stuff. And let's say this is the stuff the enemy has piled on you. You can't hold any more until you lay that down. And we're here to tell you, lay it down. This is how you get rid of it. This is how you get your, your, your arms empty. This is how you get your hands empty of all the stuff the enemy has convinced you that you needed, but it was actually stuff he was piling on yeah, you. That's it. it is all these lay, lay, a lot, lay aside every sin that so easily besets us. And yeah. he, was, he was using... The illustration of when, when runners, when they were preparing for running, Mary, they would they would carry rocks. They would put rocks in their pockets, and it's like it's almost like the military today will put you know these heavy backpacks on, yeah. and they would train. But he was painting a picture. Okay, now it's time to really run the race. You know what you do? You empty out take all your pockets. You, feel you take light. it off. <laughs> you take it all off so <laughs> that you're right. 30, 40 pounds lighter, so that now you're you're grooving and you're moving. Yeah, run, baby, run. <laughs> and see, when we lay aside every weight then you have the space for the things that God wants to equip you with. Yeah. And you're happiest when your arms are empty of the things the enemy has piled on you to hold you down, yeah. and you have loaded up with the equipment that God is giving you to propel you forward. Yeah, that's, that's where the joy soldier. comes yeah. from. You can be a soldier. Anything then. else is a placebo mm -hmm. to keep you in bondage instead of moving forward. Father, open our eyes, I ask in the name of Jesus, that we can see all the junk the enemy has put on us. Father, let, let the Holy Spirit be like a bloodhound. Father, seeking out every lie and every portal and every opening the enemy has ever opened to our lives. Bring it to our attention again. Father, give us the grace to shut them down, to bring them down, to get rid of them, and then fill it up with your kingdom, fill it up with your power, and take us to the next level, Father God. It's time yes. for us to become that victorious army that will not break ranks, but are ambassadors that are faithful, faithful, faithful in all of our kingdom assignments. And we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Hi friends, Pastor Mike Spaulding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much-needed clarion call are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, 
James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America. Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV. Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C. Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network. Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallops, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn of Through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website. GoThereforeConference.com GoThereforeConference.com Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the best western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference Reclaiming the Land Binding the strong man. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.